Hey everyone, to set up OPL with SMB on your PS2, here's what you'll need. PS2 Fat with Network Adapter or PS2 Slim. Free McBoot Memory Card or Fun Tuna Memory Card. Ethernet cables of type CAT5 or CAT6. And finally a router. In this picture, the arrows show Ethernet cables. A PC connects to the router, then to the PS2. In the next one, a laptop uses Wi-Fi, but the PS2 still connects with one cable. You can use either method to connect your PS2 for the SMB setup. First, head down to the bottom right corner of your screen and right-click on the network icon that's either the Wi-Fi symbol or the Ethernet one, depending on what you're using. From the menu that pops up, click on Open Network and Internet Settings. Now in this window, click on Properties under your current connection. And here you just need to switch your profile from public to private. Once that's done, you can go ahead and close this window. Next, open the control panel. You can just search for it from the start menu. Once you're in the control panel, go ahead and click on programs. Now under Programs and Features, click on Turn Windows Features On or Off. In the new window that pops up, scroll down until you see SMB 1.0 slash CIFS File Sharing Support and SMB Direct. Make sure both of these boxes are checked. Then click OK and Windows will install the necessary components. Once that's done, just go ahead and restart your PC to apply the changes. After your PC restarts, go ahead and open the network and internet settings again. Once you're inside the network and sharing center, click on network and sharing center once again. Then on the left hand side, click on change advanced sharing settings. Under the private section, click the drop down to expand it. Now make sure Turn on Network Discovery is selected. And also check the box that says Turn on Automatic Setup of Network Connected Devices. Then, under File and Printer Sharing, enable Turn on File and Printer Sharing. Once you've turned on both options, go ahead and close this window. Once that window is closed, we're ready to set up a shared folder. Go ahead and create a new folder anywhere you like. I'm placing mine on the desktop and naming it SMB. Right-click on the folder and select Properties. In the Properties window, switch to the Sharing tab and click on Advanced Sharing. Check the box that says Share this folder and after that, click on Permissions. Under Permissions for Everyone, enable full control, apply the changes, and hit OK. Once that's done, the next step is to find the IP address of your computer or laptop. To do that, open the Start menu and search for Command Prompt, or just type CMD. When it opens, type in IP config and press Enter you'll see a list of network details. Look for the line that says IPv4 address and make a note of the number next to it. We'll need that shortly. You'll also need your Windows username for the SMB setup. To find your username, type echo percent username percent and press enter. This will show your exact username. Note it down. Now that we've got the IP address and username noted down, it's time to switch over to the PS2. Go ahead and launch OPL on your console to continue the setup. Once you're in OPL, start by clicking on Settings. Scroll down and set ETH Device Start Mode to Auto. 
If you mainly plan to play your games over the network, you can also change the default menu to ETH. Otherwise, feel free to leave it as it is. After that, click OK to save. Now, go into Network Settings. Scroll down to Address Type and set it to IP. Then, enter the IPv4 address you noted earlier from your PC. Next, in the Share field, type the name of the folder you shared earlier, in our case, that's SMB. For user, enter your PC's username. And for password, type in your Windows login password. Once you've filled everything in, go ahead and click OK. All right, on the screen now, you can see both views side by side. On the left is my laptop with the SMB folder open, and on the right is the PS2 running OPL. As soon as we enter all the required information and click OK, OPL will automatically generate the proper folder structure inside the SMB folder. This confirms that our connection has been successfully established. Then, go ahead and save your settings in OPL. Then let's head back to the PC to add your game backups. Once we're back on the PC, navigate to the folder where you've stored your PS2 game backups. Select all the files and copy them then open the SMB folder. Inside it, go into the DVD folder and paste your games there. Next, download OPL Manager. You'll find the link in the description below. Once it's downloaded, extract the contents into a folder and then run the file named OPLManager.exe. In OPL Manager, start by clicking on Save Twice. For the path setting, click on Browse, navigate inside your SMB folder, and select it. Click on Save. Then click OK twice to confirm. Quick pause, new users, you can skip this. For those who followed my USB tutorial, you will need to update the OPL folder path to your SMB setup. Just go to Settings, choose Change Mode slash OPL folder, select your SMB folder, click on Save, and then continue with the tutorial. Now, at the top, go to Settings and change the ISO naming format from old to new, and click OK. After that, go to Batch Actions and choose Art Download. Make sure the remaining boxes are checked and click Start. Once the artwork has finished downloading, it's time to switch back to the PS2 and test out our games. Now that we're back in OPL, you'll see our game backups are showing but the covers aren't, since we missed a setting. Press Start, go to Display Settings, Scroll down and turn cover art to on, then hit OK and save your settings. You should now see the covers appear. Let's go ahead and launch a game to test if everything's working. Over. 
As you can see, the game boots up successfully. no FMV slowdown or audio stuttering like you'd normally get with USB loading. Thanks a lot for watching the video all the way to the end. If you found it helpful, please consider leaving a like, dropping a comment, and subscribing to the channel. And if you'd like to support my work, even a small donation on Ko-Fi, as little as $1, really helps and is greatly appreciated. Stay tuned. The next tutorial will cover setting up Popstarter so you can play PS1 games over SMB as well. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.